Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophin at the Babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge. It has been a while. Maybe I should start with explaining that a little bit why that was. Um, I've been in the hospital twice actually uh, over the past five weeks and I've uh, only just recently uh, fully recovered from surgery as well. Uh, I went to the hospital with severe stomach aches. Uh, they still don't know what the problem really is, but um, yeah, I, I should be fine enough for now um that's it about my health let's get into why we're actually here so uh we're talking about a very interesting dex and today uh, i did miss uh, an expansion kind of uh, so we're going to be checking out those new cards starting with square cell uh with a very very cool symbiosis deck uh, that i have aptly named symbiosis i don't think i need to explain why i've made that uh, play on words this deck is filled to the brim with lovely green and blue ladies um, and of course the symbiosis uh, mechanic where we spawn a wandering tree and for every nature card that we play with a power equal to the amount of symbiosis units that we have on the field. Uh, this is a point slammy engine deck pure song, not really a lot of control options. Uh, there are a few but not a lot so use them carefully uh, but it's very very powerful especially in this meta at the moment. So uh, I'll go through each and every single card one by one and after that we're going to go into some example matches showing off the uh, gameplay a bit more. If you're not interested in the explanation you can also skip right ahead to those example matches using the timeline down below and the deck is also available on the Play Gwent website uh, using the link in the description of this video. So uh, without further ado let's check out those cards. And we're starting out with a card that actually got her ability adjusted a little bit so the Dryad Enchantress 3 power for 4 provisions has symbiosis and a double deploy ability. If you put it on the melee uh, row, you give an allied unit four armor. If you put it on the ranged row, you give an allied unit four turns of vitality. So seven, four, four and a symbiosis engine, which is really, really good. We're gonna usually go for the ranged ability, giving us some vitality. Then we have one of the newer cards, the Nyad Pond Keeper, five power for four provisions and on deploy also a double um, ability. On the melee row, you damage an enemy unit by an allied wandering tree and power and then reset the wandering tree end leaving it with one power left um, but of course the damage can be quite significant and on the range row you infuse a non-symbiosis allied unit with symbiosis um, this could be um, you, we usually go for the ranged row uh, ability but on the melee row it is a good offensive option as well as you can see by the rock in her hand then our first nature card uh, this deck is full of them dryad's caress still very good you purify an allied unit and boost it by three so you have uh, two purifies here and if you control a dryad which we will almost always do you also give it vitality for three turns so six four four and a pure five very very nice indeed then we have double naiad fledglings um four power for five provisions whenever your symbiosis is triggered give the unit to the left vitality two you don't need to have a symbiosis unit on the board for this because we have symbiosis with our leader ability so you will always give um vitality of two turns to the left of this card every time you play a nature card uh, on order you also remove all vitality from an allied unit and boost self by the same amount. This is usually a finishing move where you pick a unit that still has more than one turn of vitality and just get all those points in one go and bank them. Uh, you also see some frogs on this card, those will come back later. Then of course this is a symbiosis deck uh, and I am a, uh, a squirrel based uh, YouTuber so there we go. The Hammer Dryad, 4 power for 5 provisions, has symbiosis and at the end of your turn if this unit has vitality, boost self by 1. So basically doubling up on your vitality which is very very nice. Then we have our uh, few uh, control options here, so double nature's rebuke, also a nature card where we damage an enemy unit by 5. If you kill that unit you also boost a random ally tree ant by 2. So 7 for 5, nature card, so also triggers symbiosis. Next up we have double, I think, no it's not double, I think I only left one in there, yeah. A bountiful harvest, also a nature card where we create and play a bronze quietel elf and then boost a unit on our hand by 2. Depending on what we get, we want to go for a double Atana Sorceress because she, of course, can also uh, get another nature card out, doubling up on that, uh, which would be the nicest option. Uh, but other than that, still a nature card where we play another unit and boost uh, two points in our hand. 
Next up is Moran, another Dryad, 5 power for 6, and our final control option where we uh, lock a unit if you put it on the ranged row. And if you don't have anything to lock or you don't want to lock anything, you can also damage an enemy unit by 2. This is better than the Elven lock option to my mind in this deck, because of course she's a Dryad. Um, synchronizes very well uh, with the rest of the deck and you also have a damage option in case you don't want to lock that unit then we have ida ida is our third purify option but of course allows you to purify an enemy unit as well which triad's caress does not allow you six power for six provisions the only elf in this deck uh, and if you don't have a purify option you can also put her on the ranged row and give an allied unit vitality for three turns which functions really really well next up we have Dunka, a dryad for uh four points for seven provisions and a single point of armor has veil also zeal on her order ability and at the end of your turn you boost a random squirtel unit in your hand by one if you use the order ability you can damage an enemy unit by three but then of course you don't get any passive hand boosting anymore then Fauve. Fauve is one of the most powerful cards in this deck, actually. Uh, we have a lot of tutors in this deck, and she is a tutor for a nature card. Um, with two power and eight provisions, she plays a nature card from your deck. You can choose whichever one you want. But you can also use uh, one of the nature card tutors that we have to pull her, then pull the second nature card tutor from the deck and play another unit with that. So she could potentially play two nature cards in one turn. Uh, which is very, very nice. Um, you could even do three. So you tutor her with the nature card, use the other tutor to get the uh, forest protector and then play a nature card with him. So I think three is probably the maximum. Then Freshen, eh? uh, five power for eight provisions. He's the only human in the deck. Uh, but on order, on the range row, he can do that immediately. You spawn a young dryad on this row. He has a cooldown of four, but if you have devotion in this deck, which we have, uh, at the end of your turn, you lower the cooldown of this ability by the duration of vitality on self. So if he has four, uh, well, even three is enough, three points of vitality on his um, person, he will reduce the cooldown back to zero by the next turn. And you can play another young dryad. The young dryads are two power tokens with symbiosis, which is what we want to be doing. Very flavorful card now as well, because uh, Freshnet in the books um, is basically used as a dryad producer. So a stallion, as you will. Uh, so he's producing young dryads at a, an, an alarming rate. Uh, usually it's not that lovingly though, so uh, take that for what it is. Next up, a nature card, the um, new nature card as well, Frog Mating Season, where we choose two allied units, give both of them vitality for four turns, and then spawn a frog on each side of those chosen units. Be careful with this card, you do generate four units at once, um, and of course there's eight points of vitality, so on their own it's already uh, 12 points, but the frogs have a very cool ability. At the end of your turn, trigger vitality of adjacent units, which means that you can speed up the rate at which your vitality actually gives you points. You can also move them to the other row if you want to make some space on the row that they are at. Um, so very, very cool. Because of their ability, it's probably best to put them on a center unit. Uh, so put the vitality on a center unit that is already between two other units, because that means that the frogs will be um, positions between two units as well, meaning that they have the most targets that they could have to uh, generate more vitality points on. Then our first shooter is in Grim's Council. Look at a random Dwarf Dryad and Elf from your deck and then play one and boost it by two. So that's one of the tutor cards that I was talking about. The Dryad will be completely random. There's so many Dryads in this deck that that is going to be random, but the Elf is always going to be Ida if you don't have her in hand or played her already. Now we have the Nature Echo card, Shaping Nature, who uh, which has been boosted as well. So now you can either uh, boost Nala Duna by seven and give it fail, instead of six before, I think. Boost an allied unit by nine instead of eight, and then boost an allied unit by six and give it five turns of vitality. And I think that was five and five as well. Uh, so one point extra on each of those possibilities. Very gorgeous card art, by the way. Next up, we have our second tutor card. Uh, well, tutor nature card, Call of the Forest, where we play a Squirtel unit of your choice. You can play any card you want with this and boost it by one. Of course, also triggering your symbiosis. And there's a kitty cat. There's a kitty cat. All right, moving on. Then we have the Forest Protector. I talked about him before. He's a tree and five power for 11 provisions. And on the play, you play a bronze nature card from your graveyard. So that can be either uh, Dryad's Caress, Nature's Rebuke, or the um, the um, Bountiful Harvest. That's what the card that I was looking for. 
and we have a new companion in this video now. Then Etne. Etne Young Queen is the evolution card for Squire Tell and is very very good at uh, generating more symbiosis. She evolves every round so eventually she becomes Etne Wrath War... of Broquelon, that's what I wanted to say. Uh, in the first stage she just generates a young dryad, so uh, two extra points. On the second stage she already spawns two young dryads, so uh, three units and two symbiosis triggers. And at the end she no longer has any children, so she becomes Etne, Wrath of Broquelon, 10 power, immunity and symbiosis tree. So very very powerful, she generates a 4 point uh, tree ant every single time you play a nature card just on her own. I need, I need a PT. And now we have the very fancy new uh, legendary card for Squire Tell. Aquan, 5 power for 13 provisions, has symbiosis on her own. And on the floor you infuse all your naiads with the nature category. So we have 5 including her, uh, wherever they are. So meaning that if you play those naiads, they actually count as a symbiosis trigger. Which is very, very powerful. You want to play her before you play any of your Naiads, just to maximize your points. Um, and she also has, on top of all of that, a passive ability where you spawn a Wandering Tree Ant. Uh, whenever you spawn a Wandering Tree Ant, so whenever you trigger Symbiosis, basically, you give it vitality equal to the number of Dryads you control. This includes her. So when you play her, she has Symbiosis. She, inf she infuses herself with the Nature category. So she will trigger her own symbiosis, giving you a 2-point tree ant. On top of that, that tree ant will gain at least one point of vitality because of her passive ability. Uh, so she's she basically plays for 8 points on the ploy, but the infusion of all the other naiads just triggers a cataclysm of points for your board. It's just so good, this card, and it looks incredibly nice. Stratagem is just a magic lamp to give us another unit to put vitality on and our leader ability of course is nature's gift so the leader ability itself has symbiosis so it gives you a tree ant regardless of whether you have a symbiosis unit or not and on order you can give an allied unit vitality for two turns you can do that three times. There we go that's it for the deck explanation now let's head into some example matches to show off the beauty of the symbiosis deck. First matchup is against monsters, so that's basically point slam versus point slam. This might hurt. Because I won't have full control over what's happening on the other side of the board. But it is what it is. Okay, we start with Aquan and Etne. That's really, really good, which means that our tutors can just be spent on other things. Um, I'm gonna... We do not start... Which means that we can just spend on Aquin at the first round. I don't think I need removal in the first match here. Um, and I'll leave the frog mating season for later maybe as well. No. I'm just going to go for a bunch of Nyads here uh, in the first round. I could lock something. It's probably not that useful in the first round. I'll leave Ida out as well, because she's. Uh, I can pull her regardless with that. It isn't going. Gonna be interesting. So a lot of Thrive on the other side of the board. Um, we get Self Eater. And I cannot, of course, Nature's Rebuke that here. But I could later on. I'm gonna be very aggressive here, I think. I want to take that first round. So I'm just gonna put in Aquin. Um... And get her going. So there we go. And I'm actually going to give her a little bit of vitality. Just to be out of... Um, it's still Parasite range. I guess we'll see what's going to come next. Ah, there we go. Parasite. God damn it. Okay. Too bad. Too bad. Um, I am going to trigger Symbiosis with the Nyad Fledgling as well. So let's just do Enchantress. Put that over there. Get another self eater. And gun chaos. Okay, I need to get rid of those self eaters. I'm just gonna use Moren for that. I should have done that before. Um, and just kill the self eater here. I lose my lock. That's not too bad. And then we get the Horakwax. That's gonna summon. I don't know actually. Forest Protect. Ooh, this sucks. So I'm gonna try and damage it. Um, 
So I'm gonna take the Wandering Tree and, and damage she who knows with that. I love how that's a green, a green icon that's happening there. And then we get Bloody Mistress as well. Okay, they're rearing up for, um, yeah, this is so greedy. I can still Nature's Rebuke it, but um, I'm not seeing me winning this. Oh boy. They get three points every turn. Uh, and I get nothing. The frogs are 12. And I only have one symbiosis on the board. So I'm guessing this is gonna be it. Because I can't do anything else. I'm gonna try regardless, but I don't think I'm gonna win this. So that's that. And I think if I do this... You know, I'm, I'm wasting points here. This... They get three points as well. Um, so I think with the Nyad Fledgling that should be enough because I trigger Symbiosis again and they get the points from the Vitality, yeah. Okay, but yeah, we're gonna be a card down. Um, our opponents will be able to just sabot that, although I might get Orquin back. Gotta be careful. So, Bountiful Harvest is fine. I get an extra unit from that. Dryad's Caress needs to go, and Nature's Rebuke needs to go. Okay. This might actually be close. So, I have a 1 in 3 chance that I not don't get uh, Orquin. This is gonna be really tricky. I could get Orquin back, and Orquin would be really good. Uh, I don't need Dunka at this point. I'm gonna keep the Nyad Pond Keeper. I'm gonna quickly check what I still have left. I really need either Fresh in it or Call of the Forest. Uh, so I'm gonna get rid of this Dryad's Caress. And we get the Dryad Enchantress. I think I'm guaranteed. No, I'm definitely not guaranteed. I could get Dunka. And I'm, I can't get Fresh in it. Damn it. I'm um, gonna start it slow then. I'm just gonna start building symbiosis units. Just to get the board full of them. Ah, oh, predatory dive. Okay. That's fine. I'm gonna put another one down. This is gonna be. This is gonna be close. So. I'll put Etne down here. I'll use Shaping Nature afterwards, although I should probably give... Yeah, the Nyad Fledgling. I'm going to put that right next to the Hamadryad. So it automatically generates the Vitality. Oh, get the lock. Um, I don't have a Purify anymore. Uh, but the Dryad Enchantress also has Symbiosis, so might as well do that. Regardless. Okay. I don't think I have a way to kill the self-eater, but I'm guaranteed to pull... Okay. I'm guaranteed to pull um, Ida, so they're almost all, nat they're all nature cards, by the way. Uh, I'm gonna pull Ida now. Uh, so Ida onto the melee row. And purify the Hama Dryad. I don't have Vitality yet, but I'll get that in the next turn unless they kill me, kill it now. Okay, I'll be able to kill the next one. Dryad Fletchling over here, triggering more Symbiosis. And I'll be able to kill the next uh, Self Eater with the Nyad Pond Keeper. Gun Kian, and then the Self Eater pops out, but. I'll need to put her on the melee row. Hit the Wandering Tree Ant and then kill the Self Eater. So it is a pretty good control tool. Then Bountiful Harvest and then Shaping Nature. I can use the uh, the Fledgling to get the... Um... Okay, the Symbiosis back. That's fine, I'm gonna get Symbiosis back as well. I do waste two points from Bountiful Harvest, but that is also fine. I don't control damage to random enemy units by two. That could be very lucky. We do not get very lucky, but there we go. 
They're gonna hold off on Witcher Sabbath until the very end, I'm presuming. Um, or we're gonna get Triss as the final card. That's also an option. I am using the. It doesn't need to be adjacent, right? Yeah. Okay. So I'm using this with the six vitality on the lowest unit, so that they'll book on a bomber, and then I'm gonna grab that vitality over here and get six points extra. This might be close. So that's 28 points they need to make, but... Oh, okay. We got that, okay. That was good. Very good. Didn't expect that to uh, to end up in our favor. Next up we have... Ooh, Syndicate with Pirate's Cove. That might be very interesting. Because um, I have no idea what to expect here. Start with a pretty good hand. We have Etne and we have Call of the Forest. We have all our tutors, basically. Um, all our tutors in hand. Which means I don't need the Nature's Rebuke. And I can get rid of the, sh the Dryad's Caress as well. Double Nyad, Bond Keeper, I don't need that. And Awkward in hand, great. I'm gonna just trigger the Magic Lamp and give that four Vitality. Because that gives us a symbiosis unit on the board um, and the magic lamp can just serve as a nice vitality buffer. Eternal Fire Disciple. Pretty simple card to start with. I do have all my gold cards in hand here so I need to be careful. Um, let's use Isengrim Cancel and see what we get. We get a Hama Dryad, which is good. I'll just give that a little bit of vitality as well. So that means that we out a little bit. We get the Inquisitor. Could use Fall into the Nature's Rebuke. I would have maybe preferred Frog Mating Season. That seems a bit like overkill now, although it would be a good tempo. I don't necessarily need that in the last round. Although they're really playing low cards, low tempo cards. Yeah, I'm just gonna do a uh, Nature's Rebuke on the Disciple. There we go. Uh, we could technically repeat that if we want to. Poison an allied unit. I have so many good cards in hand. Then I don't want to waste a single one of them. Uh, although I could use Shaping Nature just to be very aggressive here. Um, I'm gonna put it not on the Hamad Riot because that's gonna be overkill. Um, so I'm just gonna put it on the Enchantress here and that's gonna give us another three points, three ends. And I didn't waste any cards because I'm gonna get that card back. There we go, that's the pass. Just wanted to make sure that we get round one here. Um, of course, the evolution card is best played in the final round, but with Aquin, I think we can push with round in round two. Could get rid of one of the bond keepers. Frog mating season. And then Ida. I don't need a purifier, I think. Yeah, okay, that's gonna be better. So Fresh and Neff first and start generating young dryads. I'm gonna be pretty aggressive here. Because I get a lot of Dryads, I get a lot of um, fight Symbiosis going. Um, okay, that was a weird choice. I'll put some more Vitality on Fresne. So he's going to reduce his cooldown to zero. And then the next turn also, unless he gets killed now. Which he might. He definitely might. So we get... Melee Row is going to be even tight Blunder. Okay. That... Can't kill Frejene, so that's good. That can't kill Frejene. Okay, that's what I was expecting. And they're not going for it either, I think. Yeah, they're being safe. Uh, so pressing Frejene again. Now I need to play Orquin. I think I have three Dryads on the board. I could pull one of the Naiads with Call of the Forest. So Aquin goes, Aquin goes in the front. And that's infusing everything. We get a very big vitality tree end. So that was basically, yeah, 14 points on the ploy. Um, and I'm going to keep her at five. 
and we get uh, fresh net also is reduced again. Ah, uh, but there he goes. A boosted enemy by six, so there goes fresh net. It's fine. I could just do it with a tree ant as well. Yeah, I'm gonna do it like that. So, forest protector um, into nature's rebuke. There we go. Still have four dryads on the board, so every tree ant gets four turns of vitality. I'm gonna do mating season next. Um, just to be the most passive aggressive son of a gun that they ever was. So Congregation, I don't... They're really filling up their board as well. I'm gonna have to be careful not to do the same, because... Um, it's gonna be tricky. So transforming one of those back into one of them. And I think that's the only... They have another Disciple, but that's, that's just gonna clog their board even more. So, Frog Mating Season on Aquin and one of the Young Dryads. Spamming the boards with frogs. Uh, and of course, more Wandering Tree and So I'm gonna be pretty close here to filling up the board. Um, and I'm gonna have to pull... I could still pull Moran with Call of the Forest, or I keep both of those cards. I could also keep both of those cards. They're worth so many points. Could you say? I thought you'd never ask. There's very little poison in that deck. In the Syndicate deck that we're playing against. I'm gonna get another crime. It's probably not something that they were hoping for, because usually. That's gonna be eight. They're gonna kill Okrin with that. They can kill Okrin with that. So that's four. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Could hold it off there. I'm still gonna get like six points in vitality in total. Uh, I have three symbiosis on the board still though. I should just keep pushing with this. I'm gonna do shaping nature on one of the frogs. Like this. And I'm getting another tree ant in return. Oh, be ashamed to let this beauty go to waste. And there we have our first. Pirate or plunderer? That's plunderer, right? No, sea jackal. Okay. That's just gonna kill that. That is fine. We're trying to take out symbiosis units. So they need to do. Uh, that's gonna trigger all of them. So that's gonna be four points. It's gonna be seven points further. So we're 63 versus 44. So they need to do 20 points in one card. They're not going to. So we're going into card advantage here. We get Vivaldi. No, it's not going to change anything. The little bird. Oh, that's why there's no horse in the third. Ouch. So that's 49. And then they're going to have to go into the next round. It's actually pretty close. Eight more points. Purify and gain two coins. And that's going to be enough. And I don't have any vitality on the board anymore. Okay. Pretty nicely done from our opponent. Don't overspend too much. But now we're going to be sitting on a very, very nice stack of cards here. Yeah, I'm going to keep the Nature's Rebuke. I'm going to probably have to kill something. Um, so that's going to be fine. Mutants make it just three speech. points. I'm going to start with the Hammer Dryad. And put some Vitality on it. Then Etne. Okay. Then Etne. Oh boy, I feel like their hand was not ideal. Um, I'm gonna kill the Mutants Maker, by the way, because that has Salamandra on it. Um, but I'm gonna have to trigger Symbiosis first. What unit am I gonna pull? I could still lock something. Or just get the second Nyad out. So, Nyad 1... Uh, goes down here. Putting vitality on an immune unit. There we go. I think we got this. Pretty nicely got this. A little bird gonna infuse itself with a category that was not there yet, so it's gonna be crown splitters. I am gonna use nature's rebuke now um, to kill that little bird because it's there. Currently they're only spender and I know Deep is gonna be the final card. 
They're trying to build up a collusion. Um, it's going to be still three tax, so that's pretty good. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna just win this. They, I don't think they'll even get over our point total here. Tunnel drill is pretty nice. I did not actually know you could use um, both collusion and. Yeah. Okay. There we go. They did get over. Um, but let's do Call of the Forest into a Nyad Fledgling over here. There we go. And there we go. I mean, I could not give up in any sooner, so our opponent forfeited there. And our third match of the day is against Elven Dead Eyes. That might be tricky. There's a lot of removal there. With the waylays, so we might lose some crucial cards. Um, but I guess we'll see. We start with Aquin, uh, one of our tutors. Etne and... Yeah, so our, basically our best cards and then a bunch of tutors. I think this is fine. I'm going to get rid of Ida just because... And I don't need both of the fledglings. Okay, Moran is better just to be able to shut something down. Not that there's much to shut down. Okay. Um... It's an interesting way to start. So kill the Dryad Fletchling. So with Falve, I can get any card out of my deck. I can get any nature card, and with that nature card, I can get any other card. What the hell is going on? This is a Harmony deck. With Elven Dead Eyes. Sure, I guess. The Hammer Dryad down. That's going to go to 6, so out of nature's rebuke range. Uh, so only double waylay would take that out. We get a 3 and 4. Not that much of a problem. But it is weird to see <laughs> see something like that in the uh, in a harmony deck. Especially with the leading ability. Elf and Dada is weird for uh, something like that. I could lock that, but I think it's a bit too soon to lock stuff like that. Let's just put some more vitality on uh, the Hammer Dryad. Double blood on a sentry. Giving extra points to yeah, the tree and boar. The riots caress on the enchanters, why not? Get some extra vitality going. Torrential rain. And we get a specific card. I'm gonna push with Awkwin. So Awkwin over here, I'm gonna infuse all my naiads and I'm gonna spawn a tree power tree ant with three turns of vitality. There we go. That gets us the lead. We get a lock. And that's not going to be a problem. The only problem is going to be that I lose the infusion, but it's the nature category, so that's not a problem at all. I could... There's no purify here, right? No. Um... I'm gonna... Yeah, it's just better to do it with Riot's Caress. Um, Riot's Caress. Onto Orquin. And that gives us, again, the ability back. And definitely the round as well. Unless our opponent heavily invests now, but on Aeromancy goes in. And we get a Karate Heat Wave on Orquin. Wait a second. I have enough vitality to survive another turn. I'm just gonna pass. Yeah, there are two cards down. And that's not even... They still need to do six points. No, five points. Yeah, and the Cat Witcher will move as well. Okay, that's gonna be that was ballsy. Um... They're probably saving up for Saskia in the final one, round, but even with that... It's gonna be close, because I can stack some Nature's Rebukes. Um, and I have a lock, so... Uh, I don't need Ida, because I can pull Ida with Isengrim. Dryad Enchantress... Blah, blah, blah. I could, but it's not crucial, I guess. Let's get rid of her, and we get the Forest Protector, so that's at least one... One biggie. Um, I could just Isengrim and tutor a bit more. 
in the hopes of getting a good card later on. Um, yeah, I'll just do that. I'm just going to no Isengrim into a Bond Keeper. There we go. Symbiosis all the way. Don't know for certain that that deck is Devotion, so there could still be like an Igni or an Urden or something like that. Igni is not going to change much. I don't think there's anything they can do against Etne. Um, but I'll start slow with the Hamadryad regardless. We get Call of the Forest, which is really good. Uh, and other than that, the only one that I really want is Fresh in there, but I can get him with Call of the Forest. So I think that's fine. It's going to be a lot of units on the board, though. But yeah, let's finish redrawing and see where we end up. Um, Hamadryad first. With a little bit of vitality on that. We get the scenario card, which is going to be a whole lot of points. But they don't have a lot of cards to use uh, this with. Etne next. Because we're going to be generating like a buttload of points as well. And I can keep uh, Frog Mating Season to the, till the very end, because even the, the Vitality is going to be pretty okay. I'm going to have to let them play that out, because I'm if I can destroy a uh, an engine, I, I will, but right now that doesn't seem like an option. Um, next up is going to be Fréjeunet. Fréjeunet, Fréjeunet, Fréjeunet. There we go. I don't need to Vitality him just yet. I don't think there's a point to it. Because um, I need to give him three points of Vitality at the least, and I can't do that with my leader ability at the moment. That's the final symbiosis trigger that I could use. Um, that's fine. No, that's not fine. I can't move him. He's a ranged row unit. Let's put the Nyad Fledgling over here. That was a good lock. I can't really do anything against that lock. Uh, which means that I am going to actually use a Frog Mating Season. And I can kill... No, I'm going to kill that first. Um, it's a Forest Protector into Nature's Rebuke on the Cat Witcher. I do not want to see that on the board. Um, the rest is fine. This little one, the Young Dryad, is really vulnerable here. Uh, we get Dwarf and Chariot, so more harmony triggers, but I think we got this. I'm gonna do Frog Mating Season on the Fledgling and the Treant in the middle there. That's fine, right? Yeah, that is fine. So, Wandering Treant and Nyad Fledgling. Froggy, froggy bastards. And that is gonna be, yeah, a very full board. But it's fine. We can still lock something as well. Which I'm going to have to do first, so probably Moren first. Oof. The only thing that's really actively generating points is the Anterion. Um, that's fine. Uh, so Bountiful Harvest first. And I get... Do I control an elf? Is Ida on the board? No. So I don't get the Purify. So I need to Purify an allied unit. The rest is even less points, so I'm just going to purify the um, the fresh in air here. Not that I can do anything with him, but it's fine. And then we get Gezgal, so I can lock Gezgal. So that's what I really wanted to do. I enjoy that the most. Uh, that's a biggie. Uh, but Moren uh, locks Gezgal's. Uh, I lost all my uh, frogs, so I'm just gonna, like, Vitality, Fresh and End, hope that that's really matters, because I'm not gonna get his ability back, because he's not on the range throw. But I think we got this. Yeah, I think we do. We get the last one, that's gonna be a bunch of points still, but it's gonna be, yeah, the dwarf. And that's gonna be seven. A pretty nice finishing blow, though. And the three elven dead eyes, so barely not enough even to win this by this. Uh, but uh, let's do the finishing blow regardless. I want to just show this off again. You can take that vitality with the fledgling, so you guarantee the 12 points from shaping nature in the final turn. 
which is a huge finisher. So uh, there we go. And that got us to rank three. I think that showed off very nicely what this deck can do. So you have so many points, you can get rid of most statuses. You have a little bit of control to take care of your opponent's engines, just enough, I think, to deal with that. As you saw, even Moran has its value with uh, blocking that Gazros in the final turn there um and it's just it's just a really fun deck to play around with not too difficult to play with as well just be careful that you don't overclog your board uh if you feel like you're going to just don't play frog mating season until the very end uh, or close to it so you don't have that many frogs on the board um other than that, really, really fun. Uh, you can push with Aquin uh, definitely uh, to get an earlier round win. And then just with Etne, those two ladies are just the leading ladies of this deck. You can uh, take a round with one of them separately if you want to. So uh, yeah, Simp Biosis. To end it off, I just wanted to clarify um, I am back. So I will be making Quent videos every single week as I did before. Uh, I should be recovered enough from my hospital visits. Um, other than that, you can find the link to this deck in the uh, description of this video. So we'll push you to play Gwent. And from there, you can import it to your own deck. Uh, don't forget to upvote it there as well, because any type of support is really appreciated, including, of course, liking this video and commenting on it if you have any tips to improve this deck even further, because that's what we're here for, after all, trying to help each other out. So uh, with that, I'm going to take... Um, five here i'm just gonna end the video here so thank you enormously for watching and i hope to see you in the next video or stream goodbye stay nutty